How do? So how do we mark off a multi-scale fret and how do we radius a fretboard without a sanding block like this? We'll keep watching and I'll show you. Okay, so to catch you up on where I'm at currently, uh, this is the fretboard material that we have here. I've planed this down so it's about 7mm thick and completely flat. Um, I've attached it to, this is an old decking plank, um, good 5 inches thick. Again, planed it completely flat so there's no possible way at any point uh, this fretboard can flex anywhere while we're working on it. Uh, stuck it down with masking tape and super glue. Top tip. And then I've put the almighty center line all the way down. So now we're at the stage where I can think about scale lengths, because this is actually way too long. It's probably going to get cut off about here. But we can think about scale lengths on both sides and how to mark off where these frets actually need to go. Okay, so how do we mark off for multi-scale? Well, we know for normal ones, you can mark off your scale down that center line and then you run beautifully 90 degrees all the way through. And you need something like this, quite accurate, to make sure you are getting that complete 90 degrees. And you've got to be really precise with that. With a multi-scale, I actually think it's easier because you mark off where the outside strings are going to be for each of those two different scale lengths. So the first thing I'm going to do is lightly draw a pencil line where that string's going to be, and it's two and a half, three mil in from the edge of the fretboard. So let's just do that first. So all I need to do now is sit my scale length ruler that we've made. Uh, check out the other video if you haven't seen that, link in the description. And then we need to just mark off, and I'll be using the knife to do that, not a pencil. Pencils are too thick. First thing I'm going to do is measure off the longer scale length, which means I need to know exactly where the nut's going to sit. And on this guitar, it's not actually going to be a nut, it's going to be a zero fret. So because we've got individual saddles over here, they still need connecting for earthing purposes, so we're just going to use a zero fret at this end. I need it to be 42 millimeters wide at that point. And I'm going to mark off that point there. So we can see there, that is where the zero fret or the nut, depending on how you're doing it, that's where it's going to sit for that top string is exactly on that point there. I didn't mark it on the edge because that's going to be in a different place with the angle. Um, so it's on where the string's going to go and it's sitting there. Now I can go all the way down that string length, marking off where every one of those frets needs to be. I'm going to mark off 22. So I can stick my knife in the line that we made for the nut to make sure that matches perfectly with that nick that I've just put in there. So I know that that nut is absolutely spot on exactly where I need that to be. Now I can go through and each fret marker, put the knife into the slot on the measuring scale and just put a little push mark into the fretboard on each of those like that. So now as we move this away, you can see each of those little nicks exactly where the fret's going to sit on the string. Right, so here comes the bit that we just need to think about a little bit. Marking off that second scale length, um, you need to know which one of your frets as it goes through is going to be perpendicular, it's going to be that 90 degrees to your center line. And it's kind of a personal thing as to what you want to go. So in a guitar world, quite often it's around the 12th fret, but some people do it at the nut, some people have done it at the bridge for really extremes, but quite often it's around the 12th. On a bass, common thing is about the 8th fret. So that's what we're going to do here. So what I need to do now is find out which one of these markings is the 8th, and I'm going to count it and recount it and check it and trick it again. And then we can go 90 degrees on 
using one of these to get 90 degrees on and then mark off either side of that for that new scale length so you can see I've marked off on here um, you know third fifth so on and so on I even marked off the eighth and the twelfth I'm not even going to trust my own calculations at this point I'm going to go note one two three four five six seven eight hey I marked it off correctly how good is that so now we just need to go back in line so that nick there and I'm going to use the pencil at this point that is the eighth fret okay so I'm going to mark this whole fret off right here and now all right so I'm going to get that center line lined in gently so we don't knock it again gently again right we have marked off a fret how good is that that is exactly where the eighth fret's going to go we've got the 35 inch scale length on this one oh shit. hang on have i completely <laughs> right so we're talking about checking and checking and checking again i've just had a massive panic attack because I'd done the right thing, but marked it off wrong. This scale length ruler that I've done a complete video on is 35 inch scale on this side and is 33 inch scale on this side, but I'd written 34 on there. So when I come to line this up, I see 34 and panic like an idiot, Muppet. Panic over, let's get back to what the hell we were doing. We have now, marked off a 35 inch scale length on that top string and we have marked off where the eighth fret is going to go so on this 33 that's right three inch scale length we need to go eighth fret on that line that's what we're going to be doing so we're moving this up to where the string's going to sit so that that eighth fret is running in line and then I'm gonna go out that way and out that way so it's up to you to figure out where you want that perpendicular fret and then mark off from there <sighs> Right, so now that we've got all of them marked off on both sides, it's a simple case of joining the dots. Now again, I'm going to start from the 8th fret and work out from there. So there's no possible way I can link up the wrong dots, because I'm an idiot. Um, so let's go, knife in there, knife in there, make sure that the two line up, and nice and gently across we go marked off next one knife in there knife in there Doesn't that look class? I do like the look of it. If nothing else, I like the look of a fan fret multi-scale jobby. Just looks really cool. Uh, okay, so one last thought. I'm actually going to mark off where the 23rd fret is going to go. Then the end of the fretboard would actually be where the 23rd fret's going to go. So I'm going to mark that off. At this end of the fretboard, again, I want to cut the fretboard off at an angle. So that's where the zero fret's going to be. Uh, what I'm going to do is cut off from that corner just running parallel with there so the nut will actually finish that side to hold the strings in place so that they don't slide around 
but that will be actually where the zero fret's going to go. There we go. So then we can chop down that line to get rid of that and chop down this line to get rid of that. So here I am smack bang in the middle of a quandary. What am I going to do next? Do I cut the fret slots or do I radius the board? Hmm. I think probably cut the fret slots since I've marked them off. We'll cut them off and then once we've radiused it, we'll have to go over them again with the saw as the edges have got lower to make sure they're deep enough. What I'm finding a lot of people are, are doing is using these um, pull saws to cut the fret slots. And I'm guessing then that's got to be deep enough to cover that radius when it's cut in as well, which means the center point of that cut is then really, really deep. I don't like that. I don't want to take away any more board than I need to. So I think I'm going to end up cutting these fret slots probably twice, once to mark them off, then we'll radius the fretboard, then we'll go back in and just make sure that the edges are deep enough. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. So here I'm just going to put some masking tape on as a depth stop. Uh, or a depth marker at the very least. So just running up the, the fret that I'm actually going to use up against the teeth and then I can put some masking tape just away from that line so I know it's going to be deep enough, the frets aren't going to stand proud. Um, but I'm not going to take off a load of meat that's unnecessary. So now that's set we can then go in and cut just up to there to know that it's going to be the right depth. Okay, so getting the teeth to run in the center of that knife mark. I'm going to do it from that edge. And then I'm going to do it from this edge. Really carefully join the two together. slots cut so the advantage of doing this before radiusing is it means if your saw does jump well we've got this little mark in here um, we, we're going to get rid of that by the time we radius this as well right so time to radius this fretboard now I'm not going to use a sanding block to radius this this is absolutely the easiest way of radiusing a neck it's getting a block putting some sandpaper on it rub it up and down until it's the right shape and each of these sanding blocks then needs to be a specific size so I've got a nine and a half inch radius sanding block but it's the only one I have and nine and a half inch isn't going to cut it for this fretboard this actually wants to be a compound radius so what we've got is a 16 inch radius at this end and a 14 inch radius at that end so how are we going to do that? You certainly can't do that with a sanding block. We're going to use one of my favourite tools ever, a massive plane. Uh, you can do this with smaller planes, um, you know, just be careful. Um, basically, when you're using a plane to create the radius, you will either naturally create a consistent one or a compound radius, depending on whether you follow the center line or whether you follow the edges. So if you keep your plane running perfectly parallel to that center line all the way across the board, you will create a consistent radius. So it'd be 16 at this end and 16 at that end. If you follow the edges, so at this side, I'm gonna go in that way. And at this side, it's gonna go in that way. If we do that, it will naturally create a compound radius. And if we just take your time with it, what you'll find is that you'll get, well, I'm going to go for 16 at this end, 14 at that end, and it'll be pretty bang on 15 inch in the middle. Okay. So that's three runs on one side, and then let's do three runs on the other. So I'm using my fingers here as a stop 
to make sure that the uh, the plane is running in line with this edge so from right back here just do that same on this side but just holding it that way around And by taking little bits off at a time, we can then have a 16 inch radius at this end, a 15 inch radius pretty bang in the middle, and a 14 inch radius down here where the nut is. And that's how we measure off multi-scale frets and put a radius in just using a hand plane. The next thing to do on here, we'll be putting all of the inlay stuff on here. So we're going to have fret markers that are a little bit special and then something a little bit extra special at the 12th. If you want more fretboard action, definitely check out this video here because it's class. And until next time, sharpen your tools and I'll see you soon. God bless.